Testing one, two. We're about to start those. They're passing out the agenda that's been modified. So we'll start here in about two minutes. He told me he wasn't recognized. I love it. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, start the meeting. If we could have an uh, invocation by Chaplain Lyman Whitehead. Lyman. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you this, for this great day that you have given us. We ask that you keep guiding and directing this group to do what's best for this country. Help us all to realize that we need to get back to good Judeo-Christian constitutional government and to move forward. We ask that you guide and direct us to unite because divided we fall. We ask that you be with our military, especially those in harm's way. Be with the sick and the shut-in. Be with those that are not with us and guide us, direct us through the coming days. With these and all our many blessings we ask in our great son Jesus Christ's name and all God's people said, Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The chair would entertain a motion to approve the agenda as written. Mr. Chairman, I'm Jack. Do I hear a second? Second. Everyone in agreement say yay. 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 All, all against say nay. It's approved. The agenda's been approved. Okay. Uh, Rob Block is going to read the Republican Creed. Give me, I forgot to print out a copy of something. I'm going green, as they say. I'm doing it electronically. Um, I do not choose to be a common man. It is my right to be uncommon. If I can seek opportunity, not security, I want <coughs> excuse me. I want to take the calculated risk to dream and build, to fail and to succeed. I refuse to barter and center for dole. I, pref <coughs> I prefer the challenges of life to the guaranteed to guaranteed security, the thrill and fulfillment to the state of calm utopia. I will not trade freedom for beneficence, nor my dignity for a handout. I will never cower before any master, save my God. It is my heritage to stand erect, proud, and unafraid, to think and act for myself, enjoy the benefit of my creation, to face the whole world, whole world boldly, and say, I am, I am a free American. American. Thank you, thank you, Rob. At this time, I'd like to recognize the elected officials. I see uh, Dr. James R. Jimmy Metz here in the back background. He's one of our leading uh, law enforcement officers, not just in South Carolina, but recognized across the country. Jim, would you stand up and be recognized? Let's give Jimmy a round of applause, folks. <laughs> other, other elected officials, uh, I see Bobby Grave Digger in the back. Bobby, stand up on County Council. Let's give Bobby a round of applause. I see our uh, clerk of court, our, de our de not clerk of court, but uh, Register of Deeds. Debbie, would you stand up? Debbie. <laughs> Okay, any other elected officials I have? Oh, yeah. Very one, very important elected official. Shane Massey. Senator Shane Massey. Let's give Shane a round of applause. All right, I have overlooked anyone. Okay. Uh, I've got a chairman's report. I want to uh, come to the front to, to go over this with you. I'm going to give you a sequential report from last time. If you remember last month, it was somewhat stressful. We had the following days, following our last Monday, I believe it was a Wednesday, in room 308 of the Gresset Building, we had asked Senator Cromer to come and talk about what could happen, what we had hoped would happen with the ballot debacle. So I'm going to come down and talk to you about that. Okay. Crump, 
chronologically speaking, it, it didn't turn out so well for us. We had hoped that the, uh, and maybe Shane will come up after a while and talk to us about his perspective. He was there in room 308 of Gresset Building that day. It didn't turn out like we had hoped. We had depended upon our lawmakers to give us a just law, and we haven't received that. I want to say that again. It's, it's a difference between following the law and having justice. And does anybody in this room think that we had justice with the ballot debacle? No. no. No one did. So the, the timeline, there was a couple other issues last month. It seems like an eternity of things that have happened since our last meeting. But also we had the SCGOP state convention. Uh, and let me give you something good. I was surprised this happened. Um, we had eight individuals mm -hmm. to receive uh, Marco Rubio Go-Getter Award. Mm -hmm. Somehow, I got one of those awards. Haven't read the book yet, but I promise I will read that book. <laughs> and we had we had four individuals named as pages from Lexington County. I met and talked with three of them. And Hope Walker and the staff did a great job putting all that together. So and I was really impressed with how well, considering everything, things went off. And also, we had Randy Page. He's our second congressional district president. Randy, would you stand up? Randy, let's give Randy a round of applause, folks. <laughs> also, we had national delegates and alternates. Uh, Curtis Loftus received 337 votes. He's a delegate to the nationals. We had Randy Page, 242.5 votes received. And that's impressive. Randy's right here with us. He's one of the top vote getters. Uh, Roxanne Wilson uh, is a delegate from District 2. Thomas Lee candidate. Lee, Lee, Lee is an alternate to the Nationals. That's important. Tony Denny received 174 votes. And I've got the vote counts from the state convention. The, the, a lot of the alternates I don't have counts for because that was at the congressional district level. Um, I requested input from the Lexington County Republican Party Executive Committee here this last week regarding a pledge of support at the State House in the second floor lobby. I sent all of you an email. And thanks to all of you for, for supporting my efforts to be there and supporting that pledge. The pledge had to do with having votes recorded at the committee level and subcommittee level. And that was a pledge. I mean, it's not a law, but a pledge. We had 14 chairmen, both the House and the Senate, that agreed to do that. That's important. To have the votes recorded at the subcommittee. As some of you know, a lot of the deals that are made up there in the House and Senate occur at the subcommittee level. They aren't recorded. So now we've got the pledge, at least as long as those chairmen are present, to have those votes recorded. That's very important. And there's a video out there, and I was very pleased with how that went. Also, on May 30th, I requested, I, I received an email from Pat Donnell. Pat Donnell sent me an email asking me to, he said, can we take advantage of this in Lexington County? And what he was referring to or guidelines given to petition candidates in Spartanburg. And I, I looked at that and I said, we need this in Lexington County. So I asked Dean Krebs to, if Lexington would give us guidelines for Lexington County. On May 30th, a few hours after that, all of a sudden, I got guidelines. I was surprised how quickly I got those. And a couple days later, I realized there was, there was a, a, a flaw. The restriction, they had added a restriction. They added a restriction to petition candidates that said explicitly they had to be 200 feet or more away from the door. Well, several of us went, went down to the uh, Lexington County Election Commission. And I want to ask all of us to stand up. Katrina, Eddie, if y'all stand up. All the people just went down there. And Ed, uh, who else was here? But all these people spoke uh, for us, for us. Republicans, I went down there advocating for paid Republican members of this party who were no longer on the ballot. Just because they're no longer on the ballot doesn't mean they're less conservative. We've got former chairmen who are no longer on the ballot. So I'm announcing tonight I will sign every petition for a petition candidate just so they can be on the ballot. That's the only right thing to do. So I ask each one of you to sign these petitions for our Republican candidates here to be on that ballot give the citizens a choice. Now, certainly we have to support the certified candidates. I'm not disagreeing with that. But the citizens have a right to choose conservative members of this party. So it's a certain amount of disenfranchisement occurring if these people aren't on there. 
Now, it's extremely difficult to get signatures if you have to go 200 feet away from the entrance to a door. I know when I was precinct chairman, where Ross Snell is now, Casey Precinct 3, it would be across the street. And people aren't going to do that. So tonight, we didn't get exactly what we wanted, but tonight they've agreed to go 25 feet. We can go up to the 25 feet mark here in Lexington County. And that's good news. So I will give a round of applause to Katrina, Eddie, and all the people who just spoke on behalf of Say that again. Oh, well, there's, there's rules and regulations. There's, there's regulations. <laughs> they can actually, be, well, let's, let's go on. Uh, Bill's got a commentary there, but Bill, let's not, let's not go down that, that trail right now. Uh, well, next, um, the tre we have the treasurer's report. No, notice you'll see an unusual face. <coughs> Trev, I called him last night. I couldn't believe he's actually here. He, he's been sworn in. Three months ago, something like that. <laughs> well, 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 Bill, uh, left, he, he left the uh, accounting report, and I've got a copy in the back. It's on the website. But... Uh, Trip, you want to uh, tell, tell us how much money we have left in the basket? I'm going to take my seat while he gives you that information. Well, I got something to add to what you okay. just said, if you don't mind. Sure. On June 30th, and I meant to have some stuff here because this is the last the last meeting beforehand, um, we're having a side of the petition party at Lexington Old Mill. So if you would, June 30th, there's going to be drinks, and all the, I'm assuming all the candidates that need the petition signed will be there. If people are, are angry about it, as the citizens that I've spoken to are, um, have them come by and look out for that, look out for the advertisement and the Chronicle. If you would call 15 people, 15 families, and have them call 15 families, June 30th is a Saturday, Lexington Old Mill, just pop in, sign the petitions, grab a, a coat and a drink or whatever, there'll be bouncy houses and stuff for the kids. Um, they're hosting that at Lexington Golden Mill. That's a, a company that we set up because we didn't think it was right. Kind of off-site off funding. So. The money. There is $7,000. Seven thousand $44.29. Very good. It's positive. It's not negative. It's yeah. good. Yeah. Um, and everybody else? If there's any objections to the financials or if there's no objection, the treasurer treasurer's report will be approved as submitted. Okay, number seven, appointments. Uh, our county said we have a new county secretary, Wilma Story. Some of you know Wilma because she's also chairs the audit committee. So uh, at this time I'd like to ask, we have two appointments, but uh, Wilma Story, Wilma, would you give everyone a, your background and tell us a little bit about you? Tell us, you haven't been in prison lately or anything like that. You're a good, good, solid citizen. I'm a good, solid citizen. My name is Wilma Story. I, I own my own business. I'm a uh, accountant. Uh, I live in Lexington, for sure. I don't know what you want to know about me. I mean, I'm a dog buster. Does that help? Uh, I'm a fair taxer. Okay. You were treasurer for the South Carolina Freedom Nut. I was a treasurer for the South Carolina Freedom Nut. Yes, I was. And I remember the SEI. <laughs> anyway, I don't know what y'all want to know about me. I'm a widow, uh, but I have had a companion for quite a while. And I have two children. They're both grown, four grandsons, no granddaughters. So if any of you have them, I wouldn't mind playing with them. I don't know what else you want to know, but anything you want to know, just ask. I'll tell you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, next we have Pat Donlan. Pat's from Irmo. And Pat, would you come up and, and give folks a brief, brief uh, background? Other than being a troublemaker, some of you know Pat to be. He's, uh, I think he has his MBA at Ohio State. Ohio State. Okay. Most people recognize that as a football capital of the world. Actually, I'm Irmo. Good evening. I do live in Irmo with my wife for 48 years. I live in Irmo with my wife for 48 years. <clears throat> I have a bad throat tonight, and uh, I have a daughter that lives in Lexington. We moved here two years ago from a place you might know called Cook County, Illinois. That's where there's a lot of Republicans. 
<laughs> Probably like all of you in this room, I've worked in a lot of campaigns. <clears throat> the one I'm most proud of is before coming down here, I helped uh, elect Joe Walsh to Congress. We beat a three-term Democrat who was well-financed, who had an organization, who had the backing of the major papers in Cook County. We sent a message to Mr. Obama, and I hope he heard it. <clears throat> what I want to do now that I'm down here is I want to send a, a greater message to him. I hope we can get a good turnout this fall. We need to energize the precincts. I've been working with Lee to uh, fill some open positions in the North District. We want to get the committee men and the people involved <coughs> in, in doing it to turn out a good vote. That's my story. Thank you. Let's give the panel a round of applause. Keep in mind, Pat, uh, finishing up, fulfilling Corey Morris's term, he had to step down and run for county council. So I think I think Pat will do a really good job. Uh, next, we have the approval of minutes. You'll notice that the agenda that you have named, the agenda that uh, you're out of order, sir, the, uh, the, the um, number number eight, the approval of minutes has been scratched out because we don't have those, and those will be read both together in, uh, on July 2nd. Now, we will have a meeting in July and August. We'll have a meeting in July and August because we've got so much important things in terms of things, actions to take. We must do that. So, next we will do the, author, the officer's reports. State Executive Committee, Tommy Plomp, we had a very positive state convention. And okay. All right. Well, I'll, I'll interrupt the meeting to uh, listen to the complaint. What's the complaint? Uh, the, the minutes were submitted by the secretary, and they should be read this meeting. She has a copy with my I was the secretary already quit. The minutes don't count. Yeah, they are rude. They want to have to say that they're Yeah, I, quit. if this is important to uh, the ruling I just heard, we will let you bring some of this up during new business. I will make that decision. You can bring this up during new business. That's, that's the response. Mr. Chairman, point of order. I call for a vote to allow the... Uh, Out of order, you can't call for a vote. Mm -hmm. I'm, a following agenda can't be modified. You're asking for votes, not only... I'm going to modify the agenda and you wouldn't recognize it, Mr. Chairman. I made well, a I point can't. of order at that point and was not recognized by the following chairman. I still make a point of order with the agenda. Not well, you can bring that up during new business if you'd like. Ladies and gentlemen, moving, moving on. It is not a democracy. It is run by one person, and that's Mr. Isom. If you disagree with him, he's going to shut you down. Thank you. Okay, move, moving on. Uh, officers' reports. State Executive Committee and Tommy Park. Uh, Tommy, like in Tommy's overview, we had a what I think is a very successful state convention. We also had Mary Carr, who was looking at counting ballots. Now, I will tell you, at the end of the process of counting ballots at the state convention, we had four uh, ballots that didn't match up with her counts. So I went back to Mary. We found two of the ballots, but a couple of people left early. So uh, as far as I know, the ballots were counted accurately. And um, Tommy, what would you say? That things went pretty smooth. It was a wonder, that was a wonderful uh, convention, and uh, I think everybody enjoyed it. The uh, and. Really, there's not much to be told from my perspective other than what was all over the news. <laughs> uh, I believe the uh, Silver Elephant banquet and everything went well, too. It did. I tell you, the barbecue, I'll drive 100 miles for good barbecue. That barbecue was good, I'm telling you. That was, good. That was a good barbecue. And the hamburger slider. That was my really the first Silver Elephant to go to. It was nice. For those of you who attended, it was a nice event. Will was there. It was, it was really good. Water. Mr. Chairman, there's a second place here. I ask for the opportunity to present a report from Mr. Knight. I challenge the decision of the chair.
Now, do you have a, is there a second? I so second. Okay. We need a majority vote to ha have his challenge go forward. Uh, I would call for all in favor of his challenge going forward, raise your hand. All, all opposed, raise your hand. Those have it. I will call for division of the house. We'll take a count and vote. Okay. All, all those in favor, please stand up. issues. 
And this is a clear party platform issue that we support registration by party. And for the RAC committee to disagree with it, I believe is incorrect. So I would ask that we revise that. I, I mean, the executive committee has the power to revise this. So I would ask that we, that we would, if you want to talk about it, feel free to talk about it, but I would object to that part of the committee report. And if we can pull that out and talk about it if you want to, if you don't, fine, I understand. But I think that's a, I think we need to pull it out. Well, Mike has brought a challenge to the RAC report. Lyman, do you want to respond to that? Nineteen hundred and sixty-two. My first job in Republican politics was in Harnett County, North Carolina, to purge the dead voters off the registration list. And it was we registered by party, and they still registered by party. And for the first time since Reconstruction, they finally got control in North Carolina of both the House and the Senate and the governor for the first time. Look how fast we did it down here. If every Republican voted for you for whatever office you run against, you're not going to get up. You've got to have the independents and you've got to have the, uh, some Democrats that are going to cross over. And if you vote in one primary, you cannot vote in another primary. And that's why I voted against this. That's why I was the most vehemently against it. I was the most outspoken one against it, and I will continue to be the most outspoken one. This party, when Floyd Spence and all of them switched over, could never have gotten it where we are had it been, you had to register by party. Because people would have said, well, I've got to vote for the dog catcher, I've got to vote for county council, and they're all Democrats. And this is what I don't want to see happen in this state. We've got counties that still don't have parties that uh, a Republican representative that we're working with. And these people vote on the national election, and most of them, or a good many of them, do not vote for the Democratic presidential candidate. And ladies and gentlemen, that's the job we've got right now. We need to stop bickering and get together, get united. If you listen to my prayer, I said, united we win. Divided by God we fall. And the, the President Lincoln was the one that came up with that. And I sure didn't agree with everything he did or said, but I agreed with him on that statement. And I will fight it with every tooth and nail that I've got left in my body to keep it. Because if you vote in one primary, you're not going to be able to vote in the other primary. And you can vote for whoever you want to vote for in November. Now you can discuss it, vote it down, but I'm still sticking to my gun. <coughs> if you have any questions, I'd be glad to ask. But other than that, Mr. Whitehead, not to get to the point of the right or wrong of the registration, but isn't it exceeding the commission of the RAC committee? You're only supposed to assess whether it's in comport yeah. with the Republican platform mm -hmm. and, and nothing else. No. no. Is that not no. the commission? No. No. We get. We were asked to do this job as an opinion. We were not asked to. To say, okay, Mr. Jones, you submitted this bill. We don't agree with it, so don't, don't, don't introduce it. Well, no, I, all I, all we are here is to advise and consent, and that's what we did. And as long as I'm on this committee, that's what I will continue to. Do. Most of you know me in this room, and what I say, I stick to it. Yes, ma'am. I'm gonna put this in the form of a question. Did you know the last time it came up to the state convention, it was voted down? Did you know last time it came up with the state Republican Women's Convention, it was voted down two to one. We still want our right to vote for who we want to. Our own chairman, some of us have voted for Democrats because that's been the best person on there. I agree totally with what the right committee did. It violates my rights. It takes away my rights to say I can only vote for who's on the Republican ticket. And I will reiterate, look at the history, I will re read the history of this party, in, uh, particularly in this county, but in the state, and this county is the one that really got it started when Florence Spence and Strong Thurman changed parties. Well, may, may I ask a question? Well, yes, Mike, Mike, Mike you've, already, you've already been up here once, let me. Well, it, it, Mr. Whitehead has been up well, here. I, I wasn't debating the issue, I was just objecting to the one point, and now we're debating the issue. 
Well, well you, you brought the issue up. You, 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 uh, you were adverse. Yeah, that, yeah, you, you were adverse to the opinion. I'll let, I'll let you speak. I, I think everyone on the RAC committee should have the equal opportunity you've had. If anyone else from the RAC committee would like to speak, Bill, former RAC member, Bill Rentiers, would you like to come up and say anything yes, about sir, this? I'll be brief. I don't want to take up your, your whole evening, but like Mr. Green, I'm a member of the RAC committee and I was not able to be there. And I would have uh, debated tooth and nail, like Mr. Whitehead, against any uh, adoption of primary by party. Uh, I, I don't think it's right. I don't think you need to do that. Uh, I think it limits your, your choices. Uh, the crossover, he made a great point about crossover uh, votes and people uh, changing parties has got us where we were today. Um, I, I'm not for it. No. Uh, and uh, anytime the issue comes up again, the RAC committee is not just to put things up as a litmus against the party platform only. If you go back and look at the oath that we took, it was to measure it, yes, against the party platform, but also against the Constitution of the United States, the Declaration, the founding documents, and the ethos of the founding fathers. Okay? And I don't believe uh, even parties or factions, as the founders called it, is something that they would have supported. But Therefore, I think uh, changing South Carolina into a, a primary by, by party, you know, voting by party only, I don't think we need to do that. Does anyone else in the RAC committee wish to speak before? Yes, Joyce. Mm -hmm. I can talk loud from here. I don't have the bill in front of me, but it was very confusing that you signed up like to be a Republican today and go vote on the 12th. But then you want to change later and switch back. There's a 30-day deal in there. There's a 60-day deal in there. And you talk about chaos at the election commission. You know, people say, well, I did it, but they didn't do it timely. Then they come up to us at the polls. Oh, I changed, but you didn't do it timely. You're going to have more chaos than ever. So I think we need to leave it like it is. Okay, you want to ask me to me. We should say anything. If, if not, the chair would entertain a motion to no, 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 no. Okay, motion to accept the RAC in a second from Okay, the chair would entertain um, approval. Any, oh, well, any further discussion from the audience? Any, anyone else want to say anything about this? Can I have one minute? All right, Mike. Mike, Mike, you got one minute. I, I would just, I would just like to pull to the point is that this bill says that if you are an independent, you can vote in the Republican primary or the Democratic primary. It doesn't limit people. Now, the problem we are starting to have is we see it when some of our current representatives are put in there. Mike, in Mike, would you come up here? Some of these people can't see or hear you in the back. The, the problem is, is that some of the people that some of the our elected officials have been put in there by crossover voters. And I think we know who we're talking about. Someone, I mean, one of the Senate candidates has been targeting Democrats and bringing them into Republican Party and primaries to vote because they have no Democratic primary. So we as a party must be voting on our nominee, not Democrats. Don't need to be voting on our nominee. Republicans need to be voting on our nominee. We have the ability to go after more people by getting independents and others to come and vote in our primary. That is addressed in the bill. They're allowed to come in and vote. So, I, I mean, I do agree that with Mr. Whitehead, it did make sense in 1964 and when we were building the party. Five now seconds. we're the dominant party and we need to change. Thanks, Mike. Okay, Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Uh, since there's so much discussion about it, and I know for myself, my recollection of RAC, uh, Republican Adherence Committee, was to mainly decide whether the idea was uh, in, in line with the Republican platform, mainly in the uh, constitutional issues and other conservative issues. But our RAC shouldn't be deciding um, whether something is constitutional or not, unless they're attorneys. 
Well, so I, I, we're asking us to vote on it. Well, this is a this is a point of disagreement, Tom. And I respect your opinion, but that's the whole reason the rack was set up to to have an informed group of people, dear conservative people, who would examine the issue in detail and express an opinion on on that that issue. And, and, and it doesn't really fit the ethos of being a, a conservative, a truly conservative, and that's worked very well. And I would encourage anyone that has the point you just brought up. I understand your point. But anyone who would like to come visit the RAC committee, Lyman will tell you, observe the process in motion. It's, it's an opinion only. There, these are not attorneys. They don't have to be attorneys. You don't have to be an attorney to vote. It's an opinion, informed opinion. These are uh, thinking people, and it's a spectrum of people across the entire Republican Party here in Lexington County that I've intentionally put in place, not one side or the other, but to have open discussions. And I encourage open discussions, and I encourage people to agree or disagree on these issues. But yeah. it's a great point you bring up. But I disagree with that. This isn't the forum to discuss the issue if we're to vote on whether it adheres to the Republican platform. Certainly it is. Certainly it is. Now, we have a, a, a motion and a second already on the table, so we need to move forward with that. So all in favor of adopting the RAC report, uh, please raise your hand. All against adopting the RAC report. Okay, so clearly we're going to adopt the RAC report. So... So thank you. Yeah, I'm sorry, I had another question. Yes, sir. This, uh, this second page about the uh, right to carry, uh, Constitutional Carry Act, is that part of the report too? Yes. Okay, but they're saying here does not violate any uh, fundamental tenets of the Lexington County Party platform. I thought that was about as far as we were supposed to go, but they're saying South Carolina Republic, South Carolina Republican platform, National Republican platform, or Constitution of the United States. Well, what I'll do is I'll, I'll take, since we've, we've approved this agenda item, I will take executive privilege and ask that uh, the Lyman, in place of the chair, come up and, and address that issue, that discussion. Lyman, he's talked about the right to carry, and, and, and Bill Rentiers and others may want to uh, chime in on that. Yeah, we really didn't discuss it that much. And for a second, we'll let the chair. Yeah. I'm just saying. I, I'm just saying. I wouldn't dream of taking on make, uh, making a decision or an announcement yeah. like that, even if I were an attorney at that meeting. Sheriff. Sure. Sheriff, sure. sure. did Jim Wilman ask you to come find me last month? I think so. I thought they said they were looking for me and he wanted you to go find. I want you to go find him for getting me up here. <laughs> <laughs>
the issue itself of the, the, either of these two bills. It's about the scope of the RAC. So I guess my question will be, what was your interpretation of what the scope of the RAC was supposed to be about? Was it just the platform? Or was it the platform the thing that Mr. Revere and Mr. Rice had been? We were to look at the platform, see if it adheres with the platform. And if it adheres, that's fine. But if we disagree with it, we can vote against it. That, that was, uh, I, I, told, the I told him the first time he asked me, he said, I said, if you want me on that, you're going to get my opinion. That's right. Well, Nobody that's else is good. The only one that has any control over my opinion is she's at home right now. I've been married to four years since January. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Uh, let, let me uh, miss, like, interject this immediately. The RAC committees have heated he discussions. Uh, and if, if you want to come, we've had guests there and come and watch this. It's amazing. I just, I'm just an observer. But uh, Lyman is correct. You know, everyone gets to express that everyone has equal weight in the RAC committee. They have lively discussions. They have a lot of information. They debate and discuss the issues. And I encourage that. I encourage open debate on issues. What I will discourage and I will be almost a dictator in doing this, no personal attacks, no personal attacks on, on people. We, we will do, we will discuss issues. We, want, we have a conservative platform. We're trying to get this fellow out of the White House before he destroys this country. And, and we cannot continue with personal attacks. We have to come together, as Lyman said, and that's what we're doing. The RAC community is an important aspect of that. And uh, Lyman, I appreciate your comments, even though you and I have disagreed on them from time to time. Ed, yes, sir. Mr. Chairman. When you first proposed the RAC committee, I understood that it was the committee would be made up of people who would render an opinion as to whether or not any particular legislation didn't violate. I wasn't expecting lawyers, constitutional lawyers, to look at anything That's like right. that. Right. Right. But also what I was expecting was, one, that we would be fed these things one at a time. And that would be fed, fed three at a time. So we're in a position that if we don't want to necessarily agree with one thing but the other two, we're kind of in a position where we've got to say yes to all three or no to all three. Well, you're, you're I would right. like to see yes, if we've got multiples yes, that they can fit to us in multiple yes, bodies. Yes, the other thing that can be done is we can divide the question into parts, in approved parts and disapproved parts. So we can easily, and that's Robert Smith's board, we can divide the, the question. So if there's one part of this you disagree with, we can approve that and not approve the other. So. I would just like to ask if we can take this this rack committee. We got three different parts in there. I mean, we've already had several quick voice voice votes. Maybe just hit us with three voice votes. I so move. Okay. I uh, have a motion and a second. I'll, everyone approve of point of order. We've already approved it. We don't have a problem with what he said, but we've already already approved. Board. Okay. Okay, I, Ed, I've got I've got a ruling um, in that it's already been voted on. So it, it can come up under new business, and, and you know, in the future we can deal with it in, in parts if you want to. But we've already voted on this one. I got the vote where you asked for the nose to agree with it, but when you were getting ready to ask for the nose, Mr. Plump started talking, and I thought that interrupted the vote, and that's the only reason why I brought my point forward. Okay. Yes, sir. And sir, if, if we can get some precision out of this, but would the RAC committee just be limited to advising the members of our county delegation and the state legislature on points of law that pertain to that, or are we going to... No, it, 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 actually, it, actually, <laughs> it actually takes any issue. The, the scope is, is what they were sworn to, and, and Sheriff Metz did the swearing in that night. And the scope of it does local, state, and federal legislation. Okay, and I, and I would just move that we kind of consider things that we can have an influence over because time is precious and the limited amount of debate that we can do it, but that we keep it to influencing our particular representatives. I thought that was the whole purpose of this, was to give them advice so that they could make intelligent Well, that's, that's, that's a component of it. That's a component. And what I would what like to do is, I think Bill, Bill Rentiers really understands the, the, the RAC committee because he's been on it and, and Gary's not here, but Bill, would you come up and address that general issue of what the RAC scope is one more time? Do we have the, uh, 
papers where it was set up. Can we just read that? I left my whole file. Yeah, let me know, let me make sure I understand the question, sir. You, you you you're you're asking should the RAC committee scope be changed to where it doesn't consider things that are well outside our scope of influence, like things that the federal uh, senators and representatives that report to us and that we elect bills that they bring forth. I'm not. I'm not yeah, sure I, I think understand. it should be. To, to ma I'm all for open debate and discussion. I just think that to maximize the impact of the rack, it shouldn't. You know, we shouldn't just be shouting with our two hands to the other end of the country. We should. We should. You know, focus the impact of the rack commission to influence our local legislatures on county matters, local representatives on county matters, and on state matters in the legislature and then leave it to the state committee to do the federal officials and, and try and do the influence upward. Because I think your point we, makes sense. And and I believe if you speak to some of the RAC committee members, we've tried to prioritize local issues first, uh, local and state issues, before we go to anything national. Uh, uh, and I, I, is there a national issue that we've even rendered an opinion on yet? Well, <laughs> and, I, and I think we're unanimous on, on that particular opinion, but I don't think that uh, my founders wrote the Constitution or the Declaration or any of the founding documents in such a way that I have to be a lawyer or a constitutional expert in order to render an opinion on it. And, and all the RAC really does is review whatever we've been given by whatever level, issue an opinion on it as to whether it meets the, the ethos of the Founding Fathers, the, the various levels of state and local Republican platform, the, the Declaration, the Constitution, the and three. give our opinion. Right. Our, our, everyone has an opinion and we know what they're like. Okay? <laughs> and we serve our opinion up for the Executive Committee's approval, disapproval, do nothing with it, do anything with it, but it's simply something to, so that we have a check and balance on our legislators. I, I would like to call time, because we're running out of time. I'd like to take executive privilege just for a moment. Uh, Senator Shane Massey has a time constraint. Uh, Senator Massey, would you come down and give us your comments? I know you have to leave. I have eight comments later, Mr. Chair. Yes, I'm, I'm under, right. under new business. Yes, ma'am. Oh, get involved this time. <laughs> I, I, I apologize. I um, I really just wanted to give a few introductory comments, just to introduce myself, um, and I'll tell you why in a second why I have to leave. But uh, I, my name is Shane Massey. I live over in Edgefield, a big city, uh, and I serve in the South Carolina Senate. I represent District 25. Uh, I was elected in 2007 in a special election. I replaced Tommy Moore. Uh, Y'all probably remember Tommy Moore. He ran against Mark Sanford in 2006 for governor. He resigned the Senate seat in 2007, I ran, and I, I, I'm the only Republican ever to hold that Senate seat. With the redistricting that took place just last year, uh, the district that I represent was moved into Lexington County a good bit uh, because I live in a very rural area. We didn't have as much growth as in other parts of the state, so I had to go to where the growth was. As you all know, there's been a whole bunch of growth up this way. So I've picked up roughly 20,000 people in Lexington County. Um, I have the other side of the street. Highway 6, I've got the old courthouse, but not the new courthouse. And then I go all out Highway 1 and then out 378, about 20,000 people. So I really just wanted to come and, and introduce myself and say hello. Uh, I've been been a pretty staunch advocate of, of restructuring and trying to trying to get our government into, into the 21st century. I'm not even sure we're into the 20th century yet. But trying to get into the 21st century with a, a good separation of powers and, and strong executive leadership. And I've been a pretty, advocate, pretty big advocate of a radical idea of not spending more than what you have. Uh, but that's a very quick, a very quick summary of me. I, I, uh, you'll be seeing a lot more of me. I'll be trying to become a, a regular attendee of these meetings. Um, and, and I apologize for having to leave early. I, have a, a, I, like, I told you I live in Edgefield. There was a young girl in Edgefield who was in a terrible car accident just a, a, a few days ago. And they're having a prayer service for her tonight. And uh, several of the family members asked me to attend. And so I told him that I would, and that's why I was, I was going to run out. Uh, and so I apologize for having to do that, but uh, in any event, um, if you ever need to talk to me, I'm happy to talk to you, uh, and I, but I'll be back and we can talk some other time. All right, thank you, Senator Massey. Let's go, uh, Shane Massey. Thank you, Senator Massey. Okay. Uh, 
Next, we have a um, precinct reorganization committee report from Lee Candidate. Lee, you want to give us an update on the organization? Okay, I'll be very brief. I uh, do have some good news. Got some more people stepping forward who want to help out with the reorganization. I've got some contacts from around the state now uh, who have some ideas, and we're going to share ideas across county lines, doing whatever we can. And just want to let you know we're uh, still a go for this, and uh, going to shoot for a meeting the week after the, uh, the GOP primary, and hopefully go from there and keep you up to date. Thank you. Thanks, Lee. Let's give Lee a round of applause, folks. Next, um, old business. Any old business? Okay, since there's no old business, we'll move on to, to new business. Now, I've got, I will tell you, I've got about three or four items, four items, four items that will come up in new business, and then we'll have the unscheduled items to come up. The first under new business is the meetings in July and August. And this is a term, I mentioned this to some of you already. We're going to have July and August meetings. I know some of you are on vacation, we may not have a quorum. Um, but if we do, we're going to have elections for first vice chair uh, in July. And that's the next, uh, well, before we move on to that, though, any thoughts uh, or discussion on the idea of having July and August meetings? I know normally you don't have those. So if everyone's in favor, raise your hand. Okay. In, everyone in favor of having July and August meetings? Can we move it from the first Monday since that's... Okay, that's the second. The second. The second's fine. The second's fine. I mean, how about uh, anybody? Anyone opposed to it? Opposed to July meeting. Yeah, I see no point. Okay. Okay. So we. Yeah. I just. I've already decided to have it. I just want to get your thoughts on it. If everyone was going to be against it, I would reconsider. But there's a lot of important business that needs to be transacted. We've got a lot of, especially because of the ballot debacle and all these other things, legal actions that have occurred here at the state level. And some of you have been involved in those. We've got a lot going on that we need to deal with. Okay, uh, the next order of business here under new business is candidates for first vice chair. I've had three names submitted. The first one is Glenn Miller. I'm going to give each one two to three minutes to speak, give an introduction about why they want to run for first vice chair and something about their background. Glenn Miller. Glenn, you come up. Miller. Some people call me Benny Goodman. <laughs> <laughs> the only reason <clears throat> that I'm willing to fill that position for first vice chair, first of all, is because it's vacant. Secondly, um, I've had um, a rapport with the chairman. Uh, he knows that he can count on me. My uh, actions back up my words, and uh, I just want to do what's right. And uh, quite frankly, that's really the only reason I'm doing it. Okay, thank you, Glenn. Let's give Glenn a round of applause. Uh, next, Michael Calvert. Mike? Well, I might have changed my mind after, <laughs> after this man. I don't know if I want to sit up there. But uh, I'm kind of new to Lexington County. I've been here for a little while. I've gotten to know some of you guys and I hope to get to know more of you as the, as the time goes on. But uh, really, the reason I decided to run was uh, a couple people came up to me and asked me to. They said, you know, would you consider it? Is it something you'd you know, like to do? And since I am so uh, involved in the Republican Party, I mean, I started when I was 10 uh, in my elementary school. I'm from Maryland, so you guys know that's a pretty blue state. And, uh, you know, I was campaigning for Ronald Reagan in my elementary school and uh, lost. <laughs> but, um, you know, ever since then, I was bitten by the bug, uh, the conservative Republican bug. And, uh, you know, I just am someone who will be very strong and very uh, willing to sit up there and then take the beating you guys give, <laughs> give everybody up there and uh, stand by uh, you know, everyone on their side and your side and uh, be very active on your behalf. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Mike. Good Mike. Well, the, last, the last name I have received very positive comments about, and I haven't seen here tonight, but Craig Caldwell. Craig, you out there somewhere? Craig? Mr. Chairman, he sent me a text uh, in the afternoon saying he would be in uh, Myrtle Beach working and asked me to make comments about his background. Oh, sure. as I've, sure. I've known Craig uh, all his life, literally, since he was a baby. And um, 
I'm making these comments from a neutral position because I won't take a, I won't uh, take a public support or, or private uh, on any any one of the candidates, but just to provide you the information since he can't be here, he's been uh, uh, executive committeeman of Pinewood Precinct many years and has been involved in the Republican Party and has been delegate to the state convention many times and gets here when he can. Uh, he's in his 30s and uh, you may, some of you know him. He's a nice looking young man with dark hair. Uh, just, just a nice, nice guy and very, very capable. So I, I just wanted to give you basic uh, information about him. Tommy, you would have to bring up the hair content. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, next we had, uh, and I actually got introduced to this fellow by Mike Green, uh, Kendall McCarty. Kendall? You want to come up and talk about the Young Republicans group you're talking about for me? Don't be nervous. Just, <laughs> he, he wants money. I think that's what he's trying to get, get at. Uh, my name is Kendall McCarty. I'm a junior at Airport High School in Lexington County. I am co-chairman of the South Carolina Federation of Teenage Republicans, and I am chairman of the Lexington County Teenage which we are trying to establish. So if any of you are interested in helping, we need an advisor and people to help out. Um, last summer, I had the opportunity to go to Washington, D.C. to the National Chinese <coughs> Republican Leadership Conference, where I was the only one to represent the state of South Carolina. And I met with people, 50 um, teenagers from all across the country, and we discussed issues, heard from speakers such as Marco Rubio, Alan West, and people such as that also heard from Chairman Rex Priebus. Um, I gained knowledge that will help me in my future and my further method to grow the South Carolina Federation of Kansas Publicans as well as the Lexington County of Kansas Publicans. This summer I have the opportunity to go back to the National Kansas Public Lenders Conference. Again, as the only person from the state of South Carolina, we're trying to get more people to go, but we have not had luck this year. But I will gladly go back and represent our state. Um, the total cost of the trip is $1,500, including airfare. And I go completely on um, donations. So I would ask that anyone here that would like to make a donation to that trip and allow me to go represent our state as well as our county at the National Tampa Police Conference will see me or um, Contact me about that. Thank you. Thank you. Let's give him a round of applause. Thank you. Thank you. Now, now, Kendall, how much money did you ask for? Uh, the total cost is fifteen hundred, including airfare. Mike, I will be I will be happy to make the first hundred dollar donation, Mr. Chairman. I mean, the the future of our party. The team, I mean, I, I agree, we all came up, and, and we were all at one time like that. So, I mean, I will, since I didn't, <laughs> I, I didn't even ask, I'm sorry. <laughs> Tom, Tom, Tom Winter, Tom, get your hand up. Mr. Mr. Chairman, as, as I uh, listened to Kendall uh, give his presentation, uh, as the former vice chairman of the South Carolina Teenage Republicans and the former chairman of the Lexington County Teenage Tom, Republicans. Tom, come up to my phone. <laughs> uh, you know, I've done exactly what you're doing with my TARS button on just like that and asked these same group of people here, and if you'll see me after the meeting, I will tell you which people in these rooms will write my best check. <laughs> <laughs> Talk to Lyman Whitehead. <laughs> you really, really need to talk to Jimmy Metz. <laughs> can't, can't, can't hear all candidates and especially current elected officials with opposition are prime targets to ask <laughs> contributions. So that's, I'm telling you, that's what you need to do. And uh, I would be in favor of uh, any amount of money that the county Republican Party would be willing to, to help Kendall with, and I'll do it as well. So. Uh, just, I, I told Kelly Payne in the background, I said, look at that, that's, that's me 25 years ago. This, this party has helped send me to national conventions, to inaugurations of presidents and everything else. So anyway, I would be very much in favor of doing anything to support Kim. Well, let, let me ask so, so Mr. Chair, I mean, so, so, I mean. And I will give $100 as well. <laughs> <laughs> 
Okay, uh, chair, will, chair will entertain a motion to give, let's say, $500. Second. Second. Motion to second. Second. Uh, any discussion? $500. Okay, question. I would just ask that he come back and report back to us after that. Mm -hmm. Can you come back next month? Okay, in the next month. <laughs> <laughs> and bring people with you. We need a lot of young people in this, this party. So, uh, the motion is to uh, offer $500 to Kendall's organization from the Lexington County Republican Party. Uh, in, in all in favor, raise your hand. Okay. you got 100% support. So, wow. motion passed. Okay. 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 Mr. Chairman, I would suggest that he put his name and address on the back table there because some of us are like away. Okay. Kendall, can you, can you do that? Don't do that now before everybody leaves because make sure it's back there and catch these people as they leave. Now, uh, I've got uh, Kendall's phone. Now, we've got one other. Uh, does anybody else have uh, Lee, you had something you wanted to bring up or somebody else had something you wanted to bring up uh, before? Yes, sir. Yes, uh, yes. Come up with the microphone. This is a proposed resolution for myself and a few others, um, and uh, we are uh, submitting it for the consideration of the, the uh, county party. It's a resolution regarding Senator John M. Jake Knotts, Jr., <coughs> whereas Senator Knotts orchestrated a lawsuit that took advantage of a deeply flawed and contradictory law concerning the filing of a statement of economic interests, and whereas said law is in clear violation of Article I, Section 3 of the South Carolina Constitution, in that it does not provide equal protection to incumbents and challengers alike, and whereas in such a case where a flawed law is brought to a lawmaker's attention, fixing the problems with the law so that it applies equally to all would be at the least that would be expected from a principled, ethical, and moral fellow human being by the electorate, and whereas Senator Knotts instead selfishly abused the law in order to eliminate his opposition from the ballot for the June 12, 2012 GOP primary, and whereas Senator Knotts furthermore failed to recuse himself in the Senate Judiciary Committee hearing and later votes where he clearly had obvious conflicts of interest and whereas Senator Knott's intervention into the election process also resulted in the unfair elimination of nearly 200 other candidates when the lawsuit was heard by the South Carolina Supreme Court over whose justices Senator Knott's wields much power and influence due to his sitting on the General Assembly's Judicial Merit Selection Committee and Whereas, when given a chance to later rectify the situation for this election, he refused when the solution offered would have resulted in his opponent facing him in the Republican primary on June 12th, and whereas Senator Knotts openly coordinated with Democrats in engineering the defeat of a Republican-led legislative fix to the flawed law and Supreme Court decision, now therefore be it resolved that the Lexington County Republican Party does hereby censure Senator John M. Jake Knotts and be it further resolved that the Lexington County Republican Party does hereby call for Senator John M. Jake Knotts to resign from his elected office and his membership in the party and be it further resolved in the case of his failing to voluntarily resign that the Lexington County Republican Party does hereby call for the South Carolina Republican Party Executive Committee to expel Senator John M. Jake Knotts from the party and uh, said request to be submitted to them at the first opportunity by our state executive committeeman. Submitted for you. You're lying. You're lying. Can you prove that? Can you prove you got stuff proved that? You're lying. That's exactly what you're doing. You're uh, lying up oh, there. Oh, let me have some order here now. Yeah, yeah, we need order. We need to put him out of here. Let, well, here's... Well, look, look, when you make statements like that, you've got to be able to back them up and prove it. You haven't got it. Let's, Nothing uh, have you got it. It's not a court of law. Our, He's lying. Our, our bylaws... He is lying. Our, our bylaws <laughs> require us to be on the agenda. I, I, I don't care what you put on the agenda. I'm going to put you on the agenda. I will. Bylaws require us to be on the agenda to be, be voting on. Otherwise, hey, you we have to go to, to, 
two-thirds in order to overcome this. So if if we won't put this on the agenda, we have to no, two-thirds. Why don't put it in court? That's where it's going to so, be. I like to have order. Uh, chair, chair. Thank, thank you. Um, you don't our, 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 you don't excuse me, uh, excuse me, okay, I'll get We're leaving, okay? we, we can't, we can't okay. have this vote on since it's only on the agenda. We don't have but if we have, uh, we have to have two thirds vote to, to, to suspend the rules. Now, if, if someone wants to make that motion, that's fine. But I would, I would say if we don't have that two thirds, it has, it has to appear next time on. Uh, yeah, yes, sir. Well. I mean, we haven't had a motion yet for a vote. I'm just telling you what the rules are. We can't, we can't vote on this. I just said that we, we can't, we can't vote on this. And, and the only way to overcome that is to have two thirds and suspend the rules and have two thirds vote. I just consulted with our, our, our attorney. Summer. Motion to suspend the rules and have, have a second. It's not debatable. It's not amendable. It requires a two thirds majority vote, so you couldn't entertain any discussion on it. Okay. A two thirds vote to suspend any rules, and you need to pretty clearly state what the rule is that was being suspended. Quorum. Okay, we've got a, we've got a quorum call. Okay, uh, Tommy, you have a quorum list. We have a quorum. Yeah, we, uh, we probably should call the uh, precincts out because some have left, but we had 28 uh, voting members from precincts to start with. Um, oh, sorry. We had 28 voting member uh, officers from precincts to start with, and five additional officers who could vote, meaning we would have a total of 30. Yeah. Right. I'll uh, I'll call all the precincts that are organized because somebody may have come in. So get up the microphone there, John. Yeah. He's gonna call the precincts out to make sure we've got a quorum, and Wilson will help do the counts. So we've got to have a fourth in order to do the two-thirds vote. Okay, Amix Ferry. Present. Bar Road, Bar Road uh, 1, Bar Road 1. 1. Uh, uh, are you Joanne? Uh, nope. Tell me your name, girl. Are you? Are you? Denise Caleb Snelling. I'm sorry, say it again. Denise Caleb Snelling. Oh, okay. All right. You you came in after they handed me the sheet. Okay. All right. Uh, bar row two. Bethany. Beulah Church. Boiling Springs. Here. Okay. Bush River. Casey 1, Casey 2, Casey 2A, Casey 3, Cedar Crest, okay. Chalk Hill, Shaladon, here. Yeah. Chapin, here. Coldstream, here. Yeah. Congaree 1, Cromer, Drear Island, Edenwood, just left, Edmund, Emmanuel Church, Fairview, Faith Church, here, Gardendale, Gaston 2, Gilbert, Grenadier, Hollow Creek, Hook Store, Irmo, Kitty Way, Lake Murray One, here, here, got two. What did you say? Lake Murray One. Lake Murray One is Ted Z. Great. I saw a male hand stick it out. Here. He's here. He's here. Um, Lake Murray Two. Here. And um, oh, you're Carolyn Church. 
Yes. Where are you? Here. Okay. All right. Lady Marie too has some money. I wish I still have more to call that. Um, Lee Park Road is unorganized. Lees, Leesville, Lexington 1, must, oh, Maryland has proxy. Uh, Lexington 2, Jordan. President. Carl Jordan. Yeah. Lexington three. Lexington four. Lynn Creek. Midway. Is Sheriff Metz. He's uh, he's here. If he if he's in here, you know, and and votes, and he's here. Yeah. Yeah, well, I suspect he's preaching this slide. <laughs> uh, Mike, can you check the chair of this out there? Uh, Mount Hebron, Mount Horeb, yeah. Murray Wood, Oakwood, yeah. Old Barnwell Road, yeah. Old Lexington, here. Yeah. Park Road 2, let's see, Rich, 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 Rich Bowen, Rich Bowen, okay, good, Pelion 1, Pelion 2, Pilgrim Church, Pine Ridge 1, Pine Ridge 2, Pine View, Pine Branch, Providence Church, Quail Hollow. So, President, Virginia also? Yeah. I don't know if Ms. Campbell's uh, here. Margaret's here. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I see. There you go. Quail Valley, Red Bank, here. Red Bank South 1. Red Bank South. <coughs> Katrina Sheely. She's not here. She left? Yeah. Red Bank <coughs> South 2. Ridge Road is unorganized. Round Hill. Here. St. David. Here. Uh, Saluda River. The, uh, Executive Committeeman is deceased. I'm the president, and nobody, nobody else is here except our parliamentarian from that precinct that I know about. So we can't uh, give anybody proxy. Sand Hill, Sandy Run, Seven Oaks, present. Sharps Hill, Springdale. Oh yes, right here. <laughs> Dude didn't sign in. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Uh, Springdale South. St. Michael. Yeah. Summit's unorganized. Swansea 1, Swansea 2. West Columbia 1. Here. Okay. West uh, West Columbia two West West Columbia four Westover White Knoll White Hall and Woodland Hills. Okay, we need I need I just need to recount. Mr. Mr. Clark, Hollow yes, Hollow Creek, Creek Hollow Creek committeeman is here. Hollow Creek. Okay. Did I call him that? I, didn't, I, call him I was that. out of the room. I okay. When you did. Tommy. Mims. Uh, Mims is. Oh, I didn't call you, Bill. No, you didn't. Okay. Yeah, I have you. Thanks. Where is it? 
So we have a quorum. We have 34, Tom, so what you have? Double check. 34 is what, is, which is what I get, plus the officers in there. I, um, Steve Isom is still here. Ned Toller is still here. Trip Newsom, Randy Page, and uh, Glenn Miller, and Tommy Plum. Point of order, the officers are not included in the quorum however they may vote. Exactly. They're not included in the quorum. Yeah. <coughs> so, uh, 34 toward the quorum, and six officers, so we can have 40 votes. We've got, I calculated two thirds is 22.44, basically 22. So two thirds, that's what we need. Because this is going to be a majority, right? No. We're going to include the officers here. Because we're only going to take four of them. Two thirds of the president. Since we're only taking the quorum count, I'll take two thirds of 22. Yep. So 22. Okay. So let's, let's see if uh, you want to suspend the rules and vote for this, this censure. Um, I'm sorry, the officers' votes would count. Is that not count. right? But not, but not the quorum. Yeah, but, but that's been decided. So, yeah, two -thirds of 40. so it would be two thirds of 40. Right, right, uh, right. getting rather complicated, so I'm going to have a parliamentarian explain this process to the entire executive committee and take whatever action you deem appropriate. It is my understanding, like I said, the role of parliamentarian, I don't express any opinion on anything. It's just strictly to give the membership uh, a, a, basically a guide as to what the rules of parliamentary procedure would dictate. Um, I am informed that there's a standing rule of the election and county Republican Party that in order for something to be taken up, uh, it has to be publicized ahead of time. It's my understanding it was unexpectedly it was brought up this censure motion uh, in order to go forward to that. At this point in time, the chair could rule that uh, you can't go forward with that at this time. It could be taken up till the next meeting in accordance with the rules. Rules can always be suspended, but whenever you take away the rights of a group, it takes a two-thirds majority vote. And so in order to suspend that rule, it would take a two-thirds majority vote to suspend it. And uh, while we're discussing it, uh, once that censure motion was on the floor, if someone moved to postpone that indefinitely, I know sometimes people ab abuse uh, a motion to lay on the table, but if someone moved to postpone that indefinitely, that only takes a majority vote. And so either of those would stop it from going forward. You would first, if you wanted to take up the censure motion, at this meeting, you would have to move to suspend the rules. That would then take a two-thirds majority vote. 
But when you brought that up, if someone moved to postpone that indefinitely, the effect of that is to kill the motion, and that only requires a majority vote. So that's where you are now. And uh, at this point in time, the motion to censure has been brought up. The chairman, you, someone can ask for a ruling. The chairman can rule that out of order. But then someone in the audience could always move to, to suspend that standing rule, which requires a two-thirds vote. Chairman, has, it, has there not been a motion to suspend the rules already? No, no. No. The only thing I'm saying is there wasn't a ruling from the chair prior to that time. The censure motion was brought up. Uh, at that point in time, uh, there was no ruling on the part of the chair. So, like I said, you've got to pretty clearly state what the rule is that the move to be suspended. And that's why I brought it to the chairman. It needs to be pretty clearly articulated what the rule is and what rule that you seek to suspend. But as a parliamentarian, I would say that you would need a ruling from the chair uh, to start with, and then it would be appropriate to go forward if someone then wanted to move to suspend the rules. That would take a two-thirds vote. Well, and the motion to suspend the rules, um, and give you the information on whether or not it's debatable or not. To suspend the rules uh, requires a second. It's not debatable, it's not, it's not amenable, and it would take a two-thirds vote. So if I say it's out of order, someone could, could bring the motion up. And Sir, ask, okay. Well, I'm going to rule this out of order. Motion to suspend a rule. We have a second. We have a second. Second. I didn't hear the motion. Motion to suspend a rule. I said it's out of order. Uh, my statement is this chairman's out of order. It was read. What are you saying is out of order? The, the, set, resolution. the resolution cannot, it has to be on the agenda under our rules. It's not, it's not on the agenda, it's out of order. I'm saying it's out of order. That's my rule. So we have to get it tonight. Well, we, we had a, a, a motion and a second to suspend the rules. And that's where we are. Mr. Chairman, I have a point of parliamentary inquiry. A, a parliamentary inquiry. Okay. Which, sure. which rule is being suspended? It is my understanding, and like I said, as a parliamentarian, I can't really comment on the rules for the Lexington Party, but I am informed when you're seeking a parliamentary inquiry, I am informed that you seek a ruling basically as to whether or not it can come up at this meeting, I'm informed that the rules state that it has to be publicized ahead of time uh, in order for it to be taken up. It is my understanding that the chairman now has ruled us out of order. There's been a motion to suspend the rules, which would take a two-thirds majority vote. That's uh, the motion to suspend the rules uh, requires a second. It's not debatable. It's not amendable. But when you get into uh, debating whether or not you're going to adopt a censure motion, if someone from the floor moved to postpone that indefinitely, the effect would be to kill the motion. That does require a second. It is debatable. It's not amendable, but that only requires a majority vote. So that would be, as a parliamentarian, that would be what I would see the potential things that could happen in regard to bringing up this motion to censure now. Right. right. We've had a first and a second to suspend the rules, but Rich Bowling, former chairman, Rich Hip's comments, and being an attorney. Just a point of order. I believe the way the rule reads is it's supposed to be presented in one meeting in writing so that people have an opportunity to discuss it and ruminate about it, and then it's discussed at a successive meeting, at least one successive meeting. Yeah. Okay. So you could discuss it tonight and then end discussion and bring it up in old business at the next meeting okay. and be completely compliant with the law. Okay, that's, well, that's happened then. We've had discussion. We've had, uh, it's been brought up. It's been discussed. And so... Forward, right? This time we've got motion, 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 the rules. motion to spin the rules. Okay, I guess we have to, we have, yes ma'am. I move, if I, this is correct, to suspend the rules of it being out of order so that we can then move to suspend the rules on the vote. I don't want anything to go backwards and say we did something wrong. Hey, the direction I'll You're going to have to take it up right now. You're going to have to take up the motion to suspend the rules. If that's before uh, this body and it's been seconded, uh, that's not debatable, not amendable, and uh, it requires a two-thirds majority vote. So I would, it would be appropriate to entertain the motion to suspend the rules at this point in time. Yeah. And like I said, should that pass to suspend those rules and it's the will of the party to go forward uh, and uh, to take up that censure motion tonight, uh, it could be uh, a motion could be entertained from the floor to postpone it indefinitely, and that requires a second. That's debatable. It's not amenable, and that requires a majority vote. Okay. So, in dealing with that motion for censure, 
at this point in time, the, the parliamentary advisory opinion would be you now vote on whether or not you should spend the rules, and that's going to take okay. a two-thirds majority let's, vote. So we need uh, 22 votes. So let's, let's uh, all in favor of suspending the rules, raise your hand. 27? 27? 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. To let you know I here so that Ms. Ellisor should not be voting. Well, it doesn't matter. It, it, it lost anyway. <laughs> okay, we have a motion to postpone indefinitely. We have a second. That's You don't you would take that up. I mean, that's correct. At this point in time, the rules have not been suspended. Y'all can't take that up. Now. That would, if you're seeking a parliamentary inquiry, that would, there's no point to move to suspend it indefinitely. Okay. Or postpone indefinitely. All right. That business is out of the way. Okay. So, uh, all right, we've had to read, and next time it can be put on the agenda. It's my understanding. So we'll, we'll do that next time. Now, one of the things I'm going to do, Executive Grimm, is we've got candidates here to speak. And so I'm going to go ahead and have them speak. And, and the other folks who wanted to bring this, that's right, we're going to move that. I just consulted with uh, my parliamentarian to put that under announcements and public comment. And that's what we'll do. We'll put that under, we're going to put that under announcements and public comment. I made, a, I made an executive decision to, to put that under uh, announcements and public comment. Tyrant. Wait a minute. Tyrant. You said you couldn't amend it. All right. All right. Let's, 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 okay, I'll go ahead and give you one minute to start it now. That I just want to make a recommendation to the RAC committee that anything that we voted on, if we would pass a resolution and give it to our legislators, like with the um, vote by party, they won't know really what we do unless we have a resolution or the RAC committee sub submit it to the legislators. That was my only suggestion, so that they would know that the state has turned it down, the state was up and down, and our legislators need to do it. Otherwise, the the right committee is, is voting and working in a void. Nobody knows. And that's my only recommendation is um, that Lyman or Gary or somebody notify and we have a resolution here tonight. Okay, thank thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Major, for the conference. Well, we were early kicking straight. Whatever it was, I think it's a good idea that we... we I have no problem with that. I think one of the secretaries will speak up there and settle up. Oh, the other RAC committee can. The, the problem is the RAC committee is not authorized to speak on behalf of the party. Only the executive committee can speak on behalf of the party. And the executive committee did take up the issue and voted on it. So they should, the executive committee is the one who should speak, not the RAC committee. Let, let, me, suggest, let me suggest this, uh, to add, put this item on the agenda for next month for discussion, because it's already uh, 8.35, and we have, Chairman, yes, sir. 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 <laughs> okay, everyone in favor of adjourning, say aye. Uh, We're adjourned. Thank you, folks. Thank you. No. No.